Hello again and welcome everybody to these little drop-ins to come back into alignment with our hearts, with our bodies, with our higher selves and all of the amazing yummy abundance of energy that wants to flow through our systems right now, up-leveling our experiences, our realities, our timelines, co-creating together the unified field of consciousness of a better earth paradigm and as we know this year has been incredibly challenging it has brought up a lot more than usual and especially because we are such empaths we are feeling a lot of the collective energies that are um, happening as well and so um, me and Solara were speaking and we thought it would be really fun to make these really short impact for digestible videos to support you on your journey in the build up and lead up to our amazing flow optimized mastermind that is being run and hosted and starting in January, 2021. So if you want details of that, we will link it in the comments and reach out to us personally. And this time Solara is going to interview me. I have no idea what she's going to ask. We're just going <laughs> to flow with it. Um, for those of you that don't know us, um, I would say that we're both in the similar roles, maybe slightly different ways of communicating energy, but definitely both are very advanced beings when it comes to energy experts and really understanding how to hack the matrix and how to break beyond what the limitations of the mind is presenting to us. And that's what we both stand for is the embodiment of, of love, of unity, and really pushing through the barriers of, of what's possible. So Yes. Welcome again, Solara. Welcome to everyone <laughs> listening. I'm so excited. A little uh. bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That there's some alchemy there. Uh, well, you know, so question question that I want to ask you. This is great. It's it's <laughs> I feel like it's really relevant for what we're all likely experiencing. And it's super pertinent to flow, the artistry of flow itself. But a couple of themes that are very prominent in my awareness right now is <sighs> elemental sorcery and wilderness sexuality, connecting to our primal essence, our primal nature, who we be as nature, expressing and emerging, how we feel in our bodies and how we can really anchor into our sense of confidence and deep knowing and security with who we be and what our unique rhythm and flavor and style and flow and all of this is by really connecting deeply to, to nature herself, the wisdom of nature and also our, um, our sexuality, our sensuality, getting into the feeling sensory spaces and places of our body and our being and going completely beyond the mind. Um, so, <laughs> so my question for you, well, so let's, I want to tune into elemental sorcery. So what it is to commune and convene with the elements and direct them to create in our physical reality. So when you are working with the elements and you're tuning in to their essence, their power, their majesty, their beauty. Um, what is one of the ways that you are in relationship with the elements and how do you command, direct, uh, work with them to actually crystallize things in your physical experience? Mm. I love that. And what came to mind as you were sharing and asking is the, the last year that I have spent in Costa Rica has been one of the biggest teachers of that elemental magic and really tuning into the subtle frequencies of, of nature and the symbology of nature and the messages of nature that mm. is communicating to us through different mm. aspects. And one thing that the jungle teaches us that has taught me greatly especially earlier on in the year I was literally living right in the jungle now I'm a bit more elevated so I have a bit more kind of expansion around me but the, but the jungle and nature is always transforming and evolving and sometimes dying and sometimes rebirthing itself and growing and getting chopped off and you know it's such a, a living breathing mm. entity of energy movement of energy mm. and when you have spent a certain amount of time connecting with nature, and even if that's just going to your local park or talking to the plant that you have in your house or sitting in your garden or just actually 
going for a walk in nature barefoot, not having the restriction of, of shoes, you know, and really feeling that or, or getting your hands like in the dirt and really touching the dirt and, 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 and paying attention to your experience beyond rushing to be where you are. Mm. And sometimes we go to nature because, you know, we're told nature's good for us and let's go play outside. But are we being truly present with that experience? And are we being truly present with ourselves? And quite often we're not. And that's why we miss those little subtle messages. And so um, I was on a video call yesterday with someone deep in conversation and I saw in the zoom something fall down so fast. It was like a kamikaze of this black thing. And it, it basically landed into my trapezius. And the next thing I know was the most excruciating pain I have ever felt. And it was a sting and I kind of jumped back and I, I kind of went like that to kind of remove what, whatever this thing was. And I looked down on the floor and, you know, when we've been hurt, our instant reaction is to fight back, to kill, to conquer. And I, I really tuned in and was like, wow, that's actually an ego response. And tune into what the message is. And it was so random and it was very unlike something to come in out of the blue and, and sting you. And I tuned in and it was a black wasp and he was just, you could tell this thing was like disorientated, did not know what had happened. And I tuned in telepathically and I asked like, what happened? And it showed me through its eyes, it was flying along underneath the ceiling because it's built a little home outside on my porch. It was flying along and suddenly it said it didn't know what had happened. It was in this whirlwind. And so it went into flight or flight. And when it landed, like it fell, the first reaction was to, to sting, to protect itself. Now, what actually happened is it got, it uh, hit the fan. Yeah. And then it dropped down. And so when we're not attuned to those frequencies, we're, we're missing the magic and the wisdom that can come from, from what happened. And whenever we get stung in that way, it's actually an activation it's actually like a, a wake up call to get onto our paths and to make a change and to shift into something. And so when we're tuning into the elemental magic, we have to see all of it as magic, even those moments of maybe frustration because yeah, it's like now I have this huge swelling on my on my back and it, it, it's painful, but I feel gratitude for the experience. And, you know, the wasp lived and it flew off eventually after it had some time to, to, to rest. But we are always in communion with the elemental magic and nature. And it's only the man's ego that decided to separate itself from nature. And that's when we started to lose that natural psychic ability to feel the vibration, to feel the, the to, to receive the messages, to feel the, the song of Gaia. Mm. And for me in my path, I know when I'm in deep alignment to the vibrations of the, the crystalline structure of Gaia, because sound comes through these ceremonial sounds. It's like the ancient whatever the indigenous ancient tribes of that land from thousands of years ago, like their songs come through. And so when you ask the question, like, you know, how can we tune into that? It, it's really almost like you're a child and it's Christmas day, except Christmas day is nature and you're exploring it again and, and taking the time to connect even with the teeny little baby ants Mm. watching them crawl along and, and talk to them and, 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 and breathe and ground and wait for those messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, oh, stunning. I love how, uh, <laughs> well, I love how you decided to be in relationship with the thing that stung you versus fighting back and having that response because it opened up a depth of connection and learning and wisdom and awareness around what its experience was. And this is a power of communication. <laughs> you know, it's easy to just 
make assumptions or to think that we know what's going on because we're experiencing it through our own lens, but to actually open up that dialogue and receive its wisdom is extraordinarily powerful. Um, and so, when you are, so one, I want to tune into nature's capacity to remind us of our nature and how the benefits of being immersed in nature to one, connect back to the quintessential core of who we are and how we move and how we flow and what our rhythm is. So the benefits of being on Mother Earth, the benefits of being immersed and cleansed by the elements um, and how that can, there's, it's power. <laughs> of course, it's what wants to come through is, is power. How nature can remind us of our nature and support us with connecting back to our own power flow and what some of the very real benefits are of just literally stepping outside onto the electromagnetic light grids of the earth and what that does for us. So from, yeah, from your perspective. So, well, one, um, nature expands our aura back to the frequency and, 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 and um, size that it's normally meant to be when we're, when we're in, when we are around and within densely populated areas, our, our go-to is to contract our energy. And actually we need to expand even beyond that in those dense places. N nature is a natural healer because it already carries the frequency. You know, we, <laughs> I laugh because, you know, we say guy is ascending. It's like, no, she's, she's good. It's us that needs to figure our shit out when it comes to <laughs> living in harmony with her. And it's the, it's, it's the ego that separated itself from nature. And when you go into nature, it's, it's an instant mood booster. The most um, creative and inspiring um, music composers, artists, um, people that are even, you know, like athletes and, and all of these incredible beings, all of us really like have taken inspiration from nature. Even, you know, um, classical music was, was heard and received through transmissions of, of, of coming into, into nature. And in fact, even when you listen to crickets and you slow it down, it sounds like a symphony orchestra. And because mm. nature is vibrating at uh, higher frequencies, there's, there's a harmony there. And for us to get into harmony, we have to be willing to be present with ourselves in the experience of listening to nature. And mm. I think this came up for you, right? Once we were in conversation, you know, really, imagining and connecting with that flow of water like a flow of river mm -hmm. is a great analogy because a water uh, like a river when it's flowing it knows no obstacles it doesn't stop and scratch its head and think well how are we going to get through this rock it it, it paths a new entryway around mm -hmm. it it creates a new ravine and if you look at rivers historically and how they've evolved and shifted they flowed one way and then maybe something happened with erosion or something else and then they start to flow in a different way and you know we are just like that water except with this 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 our individual experience is a drop right and then as we reconnect to that wider flow um we we're able to come back into alignment with that and it's only us that puts all these dams and these blocks in the way of, of coming back into our true natural flow, which is harmony with nature, which is really the rhythm of our hearts, tuning into the rhythm of Gaia and tuning into the rhythm of what's around us. Um, and, you know, we don't have to be Zen Buddhist monks sat on the top of the mountain meditating for 20 hours a day to receive that type of euphoric experience, as I said. Mm -hmm you could start with a pot plant in your house. Um, oh my gosh, excuse me. We say pot plants when we mean a plant in a pot. You guys, I think, <laughs> mean something else. <laughs> so, everyone's just thinking, well, she's, we got a cannabis plant. Um, no, but like, even just feeling the energy, taking a moment to use your hands, channel energy, rub them together and, and, mm. and feel the plant, right? Or even doing that with a tree. We're so busy trying to be spiritual that we forget that actually the very nature <laughs> pun intended of being spiritual is coming back into harmony with ourselves, which is coming back into harmony with the organic nature of who we be at a cellular level, 
which is the exact same frequency of, of Gaia. Yeah. And so when we learn that and we embody that and we embrace that and we start to experience that in our day-to-day -day life, we learn that actually it's a lot easier to get into flow when we slow down yeah. and we get out of the thinking mind because you know, some of my most euphoric aha creative moments have happened when I'm out surfing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, I surf to one, connect deeply with Mama Ocean because it's so powerful. It's very, surfing is a very hard sport and it's very humbling and it's, I feel like it's taken me forever to get to where I'm at, but I'm just starting to really learn how, like, oh, this is actually fun instead of <laughs> falling oh. over. Um, but I always come back a better person. Mm -hmm. I always come back a better person and I always come back more grounded. And whatever I had hold on to, what I was holding on to before I went into the ocean, I come out and it's like a smile. It's mm -hmm. a place of a smile. And I go to sleep satisfied. Yeah. That is a satisfaction. And, you know, we need to make ourselves a priority to come into alignment with flow and nature is a part of that aspect. And I said, even if it's just really buying some plants in your house or going to a park or making a non-negotiable on Saturdays every day, that's, that's when you get out, you get out as far as you can into wherever you are, creeks, rivers, waterfalls, and just listen. Mm -hmm. ah. Just listen, just listen to nature and nature will tell you everything. And then you will hear the ancestors and elders. I did this recently. Um, there's a powerful mountain in Costa Rica called Chiripo. And I went to the river there, sat on a rock. And I wanted to share this as well, because this is coming through. So many people, they're wanting to make these big changes and they try something new and they do it for two minutes. Oh no, it's not working. <laughs> so like, we have to be patient with the process. And I remember that day I'm sat there going, Maybe I'm just not connected anymore. And my guides came in and said, where's your patience gone? <laughs> yes. Ah, there's a stunning quote. Infinite patience yields instant rewards. Oh, so that. good. So juicy. It's like, I mean, I can feel it's so cleansing and purifying and it just, just is so rejuvenating to our, our aura, our energetic systems. And it's like in that moment that we step into nature or we're engaged in an activity like surfing, where we're with the phenomenal power of the raw elements, one, we have to engage neuroplasticity to stay, to stay at the edge of that wave and to ride it. Like you mentioned the water, you know, moving around the rocks and it just does it so naturally and eloquently without thinking about it one of the places we can get in a, a loop is in our mind so one of the places to become like water is in our mind and in the rhythm of our movements through life and nature has a powerful capacity to support us from perceiving ourselves as that drop and then suddenly we are the magnificence of the entire ocean and it's all so clear and we're so clear and so open and so expanded. I love the, the visuals and the stories that you, that you shared. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank you. And thank you to everyone being here and watching this and stepping into this beautiful abundant container with us. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know, I have five non-negotiables in my day. One is, is meditation, even if it's just tang cleansing breaths. Number two is uh, drinking good quality water and blessing it. <laughs> number three, <laughs> number three is some kind of movement, be it yoga or exercise. Um, number four is really being present and, and, and being in gratitude for everything that I have in my life, feeling blessed. Mm -hmm. And number five is connecting with nature. And even if it's just literally I go outside and I put my hands and my feet on the earth and I just, I feel the vibration and I'm like, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and I find that even just touching base with those five elements daily, those intentions really helps to keep me in alignment with flow. It helps me to be in receptivity of what wants to come in, especially 
you know, when we are in these roles, roles of leadership, right? It's like, okay, like what's the next download? What's the next thing? Like, what are we bringing through? And so taking care of ourselves in that way, it's, it's really powerful. Yeah, yeah, it's super powerful. And I'm just even feeling the power in connecting with nature, owning our nature, and also staying deeply attuned to which navigating the elements in our own experience. So you, like you had mentioned, when we were discussing, you were supporting me with the mastery of, of water because I'm so uh, air earth and fire, earth and fire in particular, my energy is a lot like lava or the elements that I'm used to working with. And so learning that, learning how to navigate and receive the wisdom of water in all facets of my being and embodiment, you know, it was, it was a dialogue and a communication and like studying, studying its movements and how it works and keeping the waters flowing and moving and starting to notice where even in my own journey, and I imagine many of us experience this, where I was places and spaces that felt sticky, it was because I was running a loop in my mind. And I was like, oh, I could probably just hop off that merry-go-round <laughs> and just mm. get present and be lucid with what is right in front of me and just keep the waters flowing, keep going, don't hold on. So the non-attachment piece, the non-resistance, navigating our way around things and letting it all be beautiful and okay and experiencing the gold and the gift in what is unfolding like you shared at the very beginning and then just you know giving thanks and letting it be mm. letting it be that simple and really like just the artistry of owning our own owning our own magic our own power because the elements earth air water ether fire all there's so many more elements <laughs> beyond those primary foundational fundamental elements but it's what life force is it's free energy flow and so getting out into the elements is really such a power connector and it allows us to feel and breathe in our own power and if you're doing things like surfing i mean you're, you're clearly going to learn your capacities, what you're really capable of, and you can take those learnings into other areas of life. And mm -hmm. it's just so, so valuable how much she's just worlds, worlds of wisdom and intelligence for us. If we just drop in and tune in. Ah, and really owning that about our nature too. All of the facets and archetypes that we be from moment to moment to moment to moment and celebrating all of them and knowing that that that's the glory of creation it's biodiversity just like nature we're all going to be so diverse mm. and and how our nature wishes to express itself in a moment in any single moment in time and so to really honor that and embrace it and just receive it accept it celebrate it and make love to those parts of ourselves as we move through the journey Ah. Mm. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, oh, I love beautiful. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And yeah. I feel like I just got to move through a storybook with you, which is glorious. Uh. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you everyone for receiving us today and this information. And if you want to dive deeper with us, we are going to be running this Flow Optimized Mastermind in January. So reach out to us. We'll send you the application. Uh, it's going to be a really small, intimate powerhouse group, and we're going to journey together for three months with weekly calls and activations, and you'll just get to come into this beautiful space and witness your own journey, and, and yeah, there's so much packed into this experience. So Powerful. Yeah. <laughs> it's <such> powerful, <laughs> expansive freedom. It's just utter freedom is what it is. I'm so thankful and grateful that we get to share this journey and this odyssey together and that we get to be in this palpable divine amplification field to, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Bathe in all the new visions and what a gorgeous time for this too. Literally right at the year's end and all these portals and gateways that are opening and the massive conjunction happening on the 21st. 
it is like out with the old. It's, it's like blank slating things that are no longer in resonance with our standards, our values, our desires, who we be at our core essence of divinity and, and truth and love and power and all of this. And we get to create everything and new. And it's just such a magnificent, spectacular time to be in the field together <laughs> where, where mm. two or more are gathered. Yeah. Oh, so powerful. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you. I love you so much. Yay. Love you, thank you. <laughs> uh, and we will connect with you all again very soon. All of our love directly to your hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Mm.